empty shed or is it new doors tick new floor tick underfloor heating tick old rusty car inside tick where's the engine gone engine's gonna live over there Currently there, it's going to come back in, as have all the tools, bits and bobs that have all been living elsewhere while I sorted this floor out for these rubber mats. And now we are good to go. A busy winter ahead. Just priming up this piece to protect it from further erosion in the weather. I think obviously we're gonna lose lose this part here. Perhaps to cut it about here. That's a bit rough there with holes. The rest of it's good. The rest of it's looking smooth. And then you come to the outer ridge and then probably I don't know, that might be savable. Anyway, let's get some of this on now. That's the etch, two coats, two coats of this. And then a couple of coats of regular primer. And um, it'll be indoors in about three, four weeks time. I'm just gonna do uh, as many panels as I can. And then, then of course, you know, it's just to save it and then we can do it properly or probably use this. This will be, this will be fine. Just the edges we'll have to redo once it's been welded. Um, same goes for any other part, really, that's corroding away. I'm only going to take this off when I've got the time to, to properly uh, prime it afterwards as it's outside. It's just doing a good job of protecting it already. Right, a bit of an update. Started priming some of the panels on the car. I say some, just this one. And also the battery tray is that a top coat as well because with the primer on it I, I did get in under the cover and left a watermark on it so I uh, sanded that reprimed it and then put a top coat on Let's see how it does it's just so that it gives it a bit more protection while it's out here um, and we're gonna do this next with heat gun get all this under seal off and try and save this looking good apart from down here this bit here so that might need I think that should be fixable rather than a complete replacement we'll see how good it is once it's all stripped back see if there's anything else going on up here where does it, where does it start there that looks all solid alright trying to find an efficient way to acid dip these aluminium wheel trims I've had a go with a sponge, but obviously it doesn't do it in a consistent way, just patches. That was dipped in it previously. You could only do the ends in a small cup, but I think if I put the cleaner in this little tray, it'll kind of be in, I can run it through gradually. This little bath really, to see if I can get all this um, anodizing off, and then we can clean it up and re-anodize it. It's obviously gone a bit too far in places, but the outer edge, the visible edge, should be good. So I'm hoping, because these are very hard to find. Apparently there's a company in Taiwan, sorry, Thailand that does them. Um, but I haven't had any luck yet finding out who or where exactly over there. So I think we're going to have to try and restore these as best we can.
result of heat gun, sandpaper, uh, wire wheel, what else? Um, poly discs, elbow grease, and finally sandblaster for the nooks and crannies. So, I'm happy with, I'm happy with that. That's all good. That's fine. That's okay, I think now. I just put some rust preventative on that, and then primer, and then down here. This no, where was it? There, a bit more there, and then up in here we've got still got some under seal, which the sandblaster even couldn't get off, and there. So heat gun or oh, just more elbow grease. Sandpaper gets it off. It's just hard work. And then I think, I think I'll just, yeah, get the sandpaper in here now, clean it all up, and then either put the, the key rust on or straight onto primer. I'm justifying doing this in the fact it could be a summer house after finishing the project. So here's the scale footprint of my shed. And here's my car. Jig, car, rotisserie jig. So to get it in, we are going to have to do this. Oops, hold on. Get this right. there see how close it's going to be see how tight it's going to be but it is going to fit and then you're going to swing that hang on let's get it right from there then you can swing it in on the trolley wheels and every time you want to get it out we're going to have to do the same to get it out this is this is pavement here and garden, grass, and there's I think my borders here somewhere, so I've got plenty of room to, to edge out a bit. But there we go. Once it's in, I think we're gonna I'm gonna park it up like this. There, this will just be storage area. Of course, it's on wheels, so I can always bring it out. And I'm working on this side and then of course when I don't want the car in the way of everything it's going to be tilted up which means it's going to give me this space to work on other things. There we go make use of what you've got and I can literally just about do it with a three meter door sliding door going in next month the car will have a roof over its head. Operation Widen Shed Door in full flow. There's the old door and windows. There's the hole now, the new hole, nearly. This part's coming off as well. Up to here. We're going to fill that, fill that window in, and we'll have three meter space to there for for this new door. We can get the shell in. Here's the problem. No way is that going past there. 
Here's the new door. Soffits tonight. Soffits back on. Glass in tomorrow. It's big enough to put the car in then. It's about as good as I'm going to get it. Wire wheel, sandblaster. Wire wheel on a drill. On a grinder. Bit of sandpaper. I'm going to put some fur tan on it now. And then epoxy primer tomorrow. I'm gonna clean up a bit of this first, followed by this stuff. So that's three coats of epoxy over the fur tan rust converter which says that you can use any primer or paint over it but I won't be convinced till we see when this dries and whether it comes off or whether it sticks maybe it'll react, let's hope not it looks okay but it's nice and wet at the moment let's wait for it to dry and see but that looks good that looks very good so that's obviously going to have to be cut out new plate there and the top isn't done so this is this whole area needs to be sorted that's going to be a, a new part there anyway all the way down to well actually I've got a, I've got a whole replacement for this piece all that but we've got a little piece there that that I'll need that I'll need plate in I think or is it part of the top bit? Can't tell. Let's check that. I don't know. Anyway, the rest of it's mint until we get down here, which is part of the possibly part of the sill. Not sure. Now there's the outer sill, the inner sill. Could be that. If not, it's the lower part of the A pillar, isn't it? And it's, it's buggered. I have to work out how to replace that part or whether it can just be welded. We will see. Jacking point's good. This is all good. Of course, we'll get in there with some uh, fur tan uh, for the cavity with a special adapter. That's one of the next jobs. And the inside of the engine bay. So we've got two off with the Dremel attachment. We're getting into small refined places. And out of four bolts we got two loose now. This one's on the way, as is that one. Need a bit of, maybe get a little screwdriver in behind there, push it. And this one, it looks like we're gonna have to cut the thread of the screw from behind. Being very stubborn. Then we'll go on to the next one. All because the heads of the bloody screws are completely corroded away. It's coming. It's coming. A couple more punches with that. And we're there, I think. There we go. So the Dremel did these. Four and a half inch grinder did that one. We almost cooked it. Too big for this job. And that one, that was grinder, but that was all right. But this one almost gouged it out completely. I saved it though. We're on the angle.
all good. That's fine. All in all, not too bad. Until you get to the outer, the uh, outer bits. All gone, obviously. New cells. New rear wings, rear quarters, inner and outer. That's bad. That's really bad. This side. This side's all right on the inner. Mm, well, I mean all of it. And the outers, kind of okay. We'll see. All right, you can really look at this now for the first time. The inner balance. Outer balance is kaput on the corners. The inner balance. Look, that's the rot there. There's our rot. This is the worst part of the underside. This has got to be replaced. This somehow fixed. And this maybe needs to be replaced as well. The rest of it's okay. How does that come off then? It's still got the grease in there. And the round bolt, round headed bolt. Let's see if I can turn the light on. Don't think you can. Mm. Feeling it. Maybe it just pulls off. Need to pull it a bit. I don't know what's behind there. Can you see? Or does it not? Or does it come from the other side, inside the car? <clears throat> I find out. Well, it just pulled off. Quite easy in the end. A bit more brute force. Pop. There you go. There's nothing on the inside that's covered by the bodywork. So that is an actual braze on or attachment that's permanently part of the underside. So we started on the blasting, the underside just a bit first today. This was, oh it is rather, oh, it's still gone so that doesn't matter. It's this part, a couple of Holes of daylight there, so this bit needs repairing. The rest of it looks okay, um, but it was the, the under seal, the underbody seal had gone here, so it was just rust. So that's now treated. This is still under sealed, but then at the back, it's getting really rusty, so we've uh, scraped that away and we'll treat that as well. Looks all good though, there's no holes. It's just peeling away, it needs to be cleaned up. Heat gunned off any under seal. This is bare rust, bare metal, pretty much. So I've done all this. Unfortunately, it's raining a little bit, but uh, the, uh, the fur tan doesn't, what, it, it, a bit of water is actually good for it, so it doesn't matter. It's got primer left on there. Yeah, I've just been doing this with the brass brush wheel. It's come off really easy. Wet. Yeah, we'll keep going with this, get it back a bit more, then we'll treat it. And as you can see, we've got a lot to do on this underside, which has deteriorated over the last couple of years, I would say. No holes yet. About a zillion bags of self leveling floor mixture there. So we've finally finished the garage. The Pinto was well bagged, had to go outside for one night and it rained. So thank God I put that waterproof cover over it. That came back in and then I did this tonight. It's not perfect, made a few schoolboy errors, but <clears throat> all it's got to do Really, cover the wires of the electric floor heating mat. 
so that'll keep the edge off the, the chill in the winter when I'm fabricating the car. Um, Cause it, you know, that Cortina does like to rust. So anything I can do to prevent that. So we'll have a nice thermostat kind of set in so it won't get too cold in here. This is where the car's gonna live. It's just about big enough. It's gonna be a bit tight, but six meters by four. What's the Cortina? 4.2 by 1.7. So it'd be fine. Obviously I've got some worktops to come back in and I've got to put some storage back, some bits and bobs back in here, but keep it as empty as I can, the engine. And a few other, other yeah, panel holder there, the doors and bits you're working on to paint and weld. But yeah, there we are. That's the update for now due to my inactivity on the cars because I've been getting on with this. I'm putting these doors in as well. Let's get the car in the bloody place. Garage floor and walls coming on. A bit more rendering today, patching up that. Just a quick update on this week on uh, the Cortina restoration. I've been to collect these from the powder coaters and someone else I'll show you in a minute from the blacksmiths. Um, these have been powder coated, blasted and powder coated. Um, I'd forgotten about them. They were supposed to be done at the same time as the axles, the, the front clip and the rear axle back in March. But I found them in the shed um, a couple of months later and then took them along and I left them there until now. And the guy said he's going to start charging me storage if I don't come and get them. But I like it. I like the finish on these, same as the axle. Obviously them pitting from where they've been. 46 years of either sitting in a shed or being driven for 78,000 miles, whatever's on the clock. That's what you get, but they'll do a job, won't they? Nothing's been bashed. They're all in the right shape. Um, they will be back on the car looking good. Then the other thing I've got, all-terrain wheels. I'll get it across the garden grass into the shed. And that is, um, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Ray Burrow Blacksmith. As well did this plate on um, instead of the standard smaller uh, casters that were on it in the first place yeah a bit of a mod so I can get it across the grass into the shed so I've totally emptied the shed out and hoping that it fits the maths is gonna be close it might not actually fit in that frame through these doors if not, I'll have to take it off that frame, carry it in with a, with a few mates and then put it back on. But that means you can twist it completely 360 degrees to work on the under, underside and the sides and things easy. Yeah, so that's the plan today. I may die trying. So that's where it's going to live now for the next, however long it takes to get the fabrication done. Get the, uh, get it all stripped down um, and get it all welded where panels need replacing. They'll all get done in here. Uh, so yeah, we have a winter, a busy winter ahead of us. I'm going to put a worktop in over there and probably where I'm standing here. Uh, the Pinto engine's got to come back in. I'm probably going to live over there. Um, and I've got lots of bits and bobs that are gonna have to be stacked where I can find room, but I don't wanna make this shed too um, too busy. I know I need the space to, uh, to, to do the work. So yeah, this has been a, a, a day that I've been waiting for for a long time, getting inside away from the weather um, so that when I, when I do uh, sand it back and, and prime, uh, we're not getting this happening. The epo even the epoxy has struggled, so there's rust coming through. I tested this panel out with epoxy. Other side we did red oxide. The red oxide has worked better than the epoxy primer has. So 
So I need to investigate why really. Um, but that's going to have to be stripped back and done again. Um, and that's so far all I've done really with the car. I mean, the body. We did this early doors, uh, this floor pan, but I need to get under. It's on the spit so we can we can twirl it under and over and, and do the underside um, as well in here. So yeah, this is going to be um, some hard work ahead. I had to put these these wheels on uh, on the Aid Foreman jig uh, to get it across the garden because the garden was uh, was just a grassy garden and the the caster wheels were, were were sinking in even in this dry weather. So blacksmith raid burrows has welded these plates on for me. Um, it's elevated the height of the car, the shell, so I actually can't rotate it on its current setting anymore. Um, I'm gonna have to lift it up to up to the middle or even the top one. Can't do that without extending these bars. So at some point in the next uh, couple of weeks, I'll order off Ray Burrell. We'll get a longer section here so I can come up higher. Yeah, that was one thing I discovered today, that it's not the end of the world. We can still work on what we need to work on for now. And we'll worry about that a little bit later on. But there we go.